Anatole France. Playwright, philosopher, a self-described bibliophile. He obviously read dictionaries because his quotation that I love so much is, a dictionary is the universe in alphabetical order. And the words in the dictionary describe everything that we think. We make up these words to describe what we see, what we feel, what we know. Past, present, and future. And that's why words are so important. I remember early on being really interested about the origin of the word Montana. I just had that question, that real curiosity about what does that word mean? I was eight years old. And that's the first time I remember being curious about an actual word, about its history, about it, what makes a word. I tried one year of college at the U of M, and it didn't suit me at the time. I was a young graduate. I was 17 years old when I graduated high school, and I was too young and unprepared. So throughout my 20s, I had a series of minimum wage jobs, and then I started to get real curious about a formal education. It was time for me to make plans to go to college, so I did. And I chose uh, anthropology and archaeology at MSU, which was really a great choice for me. At a very critical point in my studies, I took a linguistics class. And that blew my head open and really unearthed a deeper curiosity about words for me. It also inspired me to contemplate a radio series about words, about word histories, about linguistics, about dictionaries. And I was very fortunate that Montana State University has radio station KGLT, which is operated by community volunteers, um, students, anybody who really has an interest in broadcasting can go to KGLT and lay out a program. With great trepidation, one day in the spring of 1990, went up to the office of KGLT. I knew the, the general manager's name. I went into his office and I proposed this program idea for him. His name was Phil Charles and I said, Phil, what would you think about producing a radio series that has to do with dictionaries, word histories, concepts of linguistics and the stories behind words. And he was like, hmm, okay, sure, why not? And it was as easy as that. I didn't fill out any forms. There was no formality involved. I had no radio experience at all. And about four weeks later, I was in the studio recording the first of what was to become thousands and thousands of radio episodes taken on over the millennia and say stock car. I find a word that inspires me or a phrase or an idiom that I think will make an interesting story. So I identify one, I lock onto it, I open one of several dictionaries and begin an exploratory reading of the word. And if it still grabs me after that then I'll go a little bit deeper and see if it makes a good story. If the work begins, I have to figure out how exactly I'm going to start that script. The first two sentences are the hardest. Once that's done, then I start looking up the word in all kinds of different dictionaries. I sit and I think about it for a long time. There's a lot of sitting, a lot of nail biting, a lot of head scratching. Finally, the thing starts to gel, it starts to come together, the sentences start to flow, and then I know I have something that's worthwhile. So 
Once or twice a month, I go into the studio at KGLT. I have a handful of scripts, usually about a dozen of them. I go into the, to the booth, and my longtime engineer and I, Brody Cates, will begin the process. And we've been working together now for so long that to read and perfect 12 radio scripts takes less than an hour. It's rolling. Hello, word lovers, and welcome back to Christine. Friends and acquaintances always give me great ideas. And uh, I get a lot of wonderful ideas uh, via email from my website. People come up with terms and idioms that I know of and have used, but n have never considered putting them on the radio. And those are the best. I think the radio series that I've created invites and encourages curiosity about language. It may inspire people to ask questions about the words they use that they never would have thought of before. And that's the delight for me. That's the kind of legacy I would like to leave with my radio series to inspire people to read dictionaries. There is nothing like the stories you can find in dictionaries. Go to the reference section in the library and look at the different dictionaries that are on the shelves. Or go to a pawn shop and see if there's an antique dictionary that is beautiful that people can buy and take home. That's my delight. That's my hope. Because, like Anatole France said, a dictionary is the universe in alphabetical order. It is true. I have a few good years in me left. I'd like to continue Christy the Wordsmith for another decade, perhaps because I feel like there is so much more about language that I could uncover. It never grows old. I never get tired of it. So as long as I am of sound mind and can see to type on my computer and read my dictionaries, I'll keep going.